welcome once again. This is Loy Masiru from LAM Network. It's 8 o'clock with the news headlines. <laughs> oh, I always wanted to do that. How was it? You know, today's news headlines with the headlines, with the whatever. Okay, anyway, forget all that. <sighs> Man, someone should take me to do their news network, the tattooed news network. That would be something. Anyway, um, I just thought I'd share with you some new opinions about the updates that are happening in the world, uh, especially the big shocking one, because if you didn't notice, it says here in my phone, you can see, it says here, China, India and the UAE abstain from the vote. Yeah. China, India and UAE, UAE, they abstain. And people went berserk. So many people sent me, Loy, what is this? You know, UAE is not uh, doing anything against Russia and all that stuff. And, you know, Russia vetoes UN resolution. Anyway, I'll give you my thoughts about it. Okay. First and foremost, um, let me tell you, I got an email from a person. Obviously, I want to keep this person uh, name and identity confidential. And this is what the person said. So I thought it would be, you know, I'd mix both of them. Okay. So this is what he says. It's about UAE. Anyway. Hello, Mr. Macedo. I don't know if you know this or not, but I have some information and I want your thoughts on this. It's about UAE. Ever since the Houthis attacked UAE, well, UAE did it first and then that is where Houthis attacked UAE. Okay, UAE has been asking United States to designate Houthis as a foreign terrorist organization. Okay, and the United States did not respond. I think this angered the UAE. Of course, of course, it'll anger the UAE. Okay, uh, first I'll go through what he has said and then I'll give my opinion. Ever since uh, UAE, okay, fine. Before the attacks, the UAE and USA had issues related to the F 35 fighter jets and the orders were cancelled, okay? UAE has abstained from imposing sanctions and condemning Russia in the recent UN meeting on 28th February 2022. His Highness Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Minister of Foreign Affairs, is going to Moscow on a diplomatic visit to talk of the expanding UAE-Russia relations. Funny, right? Even though there's a problem going on. If you noticed, UAE also welcoming the president of Turkey in a very grand way, even though UAE slammed Turkey whenever they got an opportunity before. UAE was against Turkey and teamed up with Greece, Cyprus and Israel and USA, of course. But now it looks like UAE has switched sides. From Team A, UAE, USA, Israel, Cyprus, Greece and the EU. Now UAE is embracing building relationship with Team B, that is Russia, Turkey, China, Iran, okay? And sometimes Qatar. So my questions are, what are your thoughts on this new change in the foreign policy of UAE? How will this affect UAE-USA relationships? Also UAE-Israel relationships? Do you think UAE is suddenly embracing people from America and other former allies, which they hate, like Greece, Cyprus are against Turkey, USA is against Russia, Israel is against Iran. How will this affect UAE if it ever affects UAE? And FYI, a lot of Europeans are mad at UAE after seeing the announcement made by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Russia, about UAE-Russia meeting. Okay, and then the person has shared with me some screenshots. Okay, so I will give you my opinion about this. Okay, okay. First and foremost, first and foremost, let's understand one thing. USA politics, huh? I'm not talking of Americans as individuals. Let's not, let's not get into, oh, all Americans are like this, all Indians are like this, all Arabs are like that. No, we are only talking of the politics of a country. And if you look historically, United States is the best I mean, if you made a Hollywood movie, you know, the, the guy who you least expect to be the main villain and he turns out to be that killer or the surprise in the horror movie that they were searching for this crazy person and it turned out to be this small child taking the knife and killing everyone. 
So USA is more or less like this surprise element. They always look like they are the good guy. They'll always talk our allies, our partners, our strategic partners, and they will give you a whole lot of very positive stuff, uh, sounding stuff like uh, democracy and human rights and all that. But they are the first ones, the politicians are the first ones not to follow their own rules. I'll give you a few examples I'll, and I'll put the links all down below in the comments. Okay. Uh, just take uh, this guy's name, uh, you know, Chi Guerrera, Gu Guerra, Gu uh, the Chi Guerrera, uh, that was uh, Cuba. Uh, he was put to death by the CIA. Okay. Uh, I don't know much about him, I'm being honest with you, but I did read and it was very interesting to know that United States wanted to get rid of Chi Guerrera and Fidel Castro, you know. And how did they do that? Well, they even employed beautiful girls to do that. You can Google search. Don't take my word. I'll put the links down below. Then do you know this Manuel Noguera, Panama dictator? He was friends with the CIA. Okay. And they killed him. They killed their own best friend. Then you know Gaddafi from Libya. As per Al Jazeera, I'll put the link down below. U.S. officials aided Gaddafi. They were friends with Gaddafi and then they killed him. They killed their own friend. Saddam Hussein, a great leader, let me tell you. Um, U.S. Uh, just Google search December 1983, U.S. Secretary of Defense uh, Rumsfeld, 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 whatever. He met up with him. They shook hands and they even supplied nice, delicious, fresh weapons when they were fighting against Iran. And these are not the typical weapons. They were chemical weapons which they supplied to Iraq to attack Iran. And then they killed Saddam Hussein. Remember the weapons of mass destruction, which Condoleezza Rice, which George Bush, which uh, Tony Blair, they were saying, we found evidence, evidence, Colin Powell. We have found evidence, substantial evidence, the, the weapons of mass destruction. They were making so much of mass hysteria every time they were talking. And that was the reason why they attacked Saddam Hussein. And after they killed him, they looted the whole place. Oh, we made a mistake. Our intelligence made a mistake. Oh, poor thing, poor thing. Okay, it's all is good, fine. No, they didn't have to pay a price for it. See, this is the problem with politicians. They will do something. They will kill, murder or whatever, or create a war. And then they say, I'm sorry, you know, made a mistake. So that's that's the point of being a politician, you know. And then we have Bashar al-Assad, who made nice deals with the CIA. Uh, in fact, uh, he was good friends, secretly. But the minute he did not become a friend, like for example, in 2001, uh, Assad condemned the September 11 attacks. But in 2003, he said in an interview in a Kuwaiti paper, Osama bin Laden, about Osama bin Laden, you know, this guy can't talk. He doesn't have a phone. He doesn't have the internet. But how in the world is Osama bin Laden making direct communications to all corners of the world? In fact, even I had asked in my videos, a guy in a, a mountain goat who has a rifle, mountain goat, a typical, you know, and by the way, he was Saudi, ex-Saudi. You know, in Afghanistan with the goats and uh, hardly any technology. He was smarter than all the technology of the most advanced nation in the world. Wow. They even flew so many aircrafts and all this. Nobody knew anything. Nobody. In fact, you take an airplane and it goes little bit out of, uh, let's say, the trajectory, the the path it's supposed to, even if it goes few degrees away, immediately the control tower comes to know about it. In United States, so many planes went out of the way, nobody knew anything. Oh, magic, magic. Then of course, our good friend Osama bin Laden. He was friends with USA. Who made him? They only made him and then they only killed him. So I give you a couple of good examples. Chi Guerrera, Manuel Noriega. Gaddafi, Hussein, Bashar Assad, Osama, Bashar Assad is alive. Praise Allah. Okay. Osama and Bin Laden. Now, what am I trying to tell you? All these bad guys who they say, oh, they are human rights abuse. Oh, they are the bad guys. And America kills them. Who made them? 
who made them in the first place in fact the way saddam hussein was killed was unacceptable they killed him without justice why because they didn't want him coming back how was gaddafi killed in the same manner in a inhuman way without any court decision nothing in fact if you are still under the impression that us is the land of democracy which which stands for human rights and is fair please explain to me what is guantanamo bay please explain to me why is it still there with people who have not who are under suspicion but they have not proved that they are the baddies why are they still in jail so you can explain to me why 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 are they still in prison why every time you know the the problem with the usa every time there's a president that changes from republicans to democrats or democrats to republicans they keep changing the rules every time that is why nobody trusts usa anymore the politicians and huh? the politics not the people now so i i give you a bit of a background about usa so this is the underlying problem and if a country or a leadership or someone still doesn't use their brains and they think oh usa they are fair and you know they wear a suit and tie and they are non tattooed and they are so nice people and they give such nice speeches uh, it'll be nice to do deals with them no i'm sorry history has proved itself history that united states is friends with nobody other than themselves they only look after themselves they will look at what benefits them the most they will look at the politicians they will look at what benefits them the most they don't give a damn even to their own people like for example why what did edward snowden expose what did julian assange expose they exposed nothing but the dark the darkness of the industrial or the political industrial complex see politicians now they are not there for the benefit of citizens they are not there for the benefit of the country they are there for the benefit of their political party and this is now the story in every country in the world whether it's india whether it's pakistan whether it's united states the politicians are there just to make sure that their team the team or their party stays in power and they'll play the game in whichever way it has to be done in order to stay in power then once they are in power they ensure that whatever direction they steer the country it benefits not only them but it benefits the politicians as well so that is why all these deals which are happening right now whether usa is doing deals with uh, uae ua usa is deal doing deals with any other country they don't give a fuck about that country they only give a fuck about what benefits us like for example you remember i told you before uh initially they were you know they have set up their base in qatar okay one of the largest american base in qatar and uh, you know then they purchased weapons uh, no they sold weapons to saudi okay and then ue wanted to be in good books they also purchased weapons from usa so all of a sudden qatar is not giving any business so qatar please stop harboring terrorists and then sheikh tamim he went shook hands with donald trump Qatar is our allies and they are our friends see whoever gives united states business or benefits they will talk very highly about them they will speak well but the minute this benefit stops this money stops usa doesn't give a fuck it'll forget it's like the best example i can give is united states is like a prostitute it's like a female who does favors for sex okay you pay money i love you saki saki faki faki but the minute the money is over the money is finished the one shot is done who are you who the fuck are you i don't care about you i'm sorry to say but this is the reality okay this is the relationship united states has with anyone in the world united states is like a very beautiful attractive prostitute and all these people are the customers you pay good money you can enter and do whatever you like but it's limited time only when the money is over bye bye they don't give a damn okay so until now you can tell me where i'm wrong so um now coming to the letter ever since houthis attacked the uae uae has been asking usa to designate houthis as a foreign terrorist organization now let's understand this who gave weapons to the houthis very simple thing when they wanted to when usa wanted to fight with the isis 
they supplied the <laughs> weapons to these guys. Okay, they supplied weapons to them. Here, attack ISIS, kill all of them. We want to win. Uh, Russia is going to take over, or Iran is going to take over, or Shia, Sunni, this, that, whatever. Oh, here, take the weapons. And US benefits, whomsoever buys the weapons, they feel very happy. So they not only do the straight dealing, they'll do under the table. Okay, I'll supply you the weapons. They'll, they'll sell it to somebody. We are not in the picture. You take it. You know, you see these Hollywood movies, no? Okay, uh, they have their meetings and... Okay, this is off off the table. Like, you know, they have this James Bond. This is, if you get caught, we'll deny any involvement. This is exactly what it is. So they have, a, see, it's, it's like um, the logic that I'll give you is, I have a business. I have a warehouse where I manufacture, let's say, iPhone, uh, smartphones and tablets and all that. And now it's lying in the warehouse. And I come out with a new model. Now the old model... Nobody wants to buy. And I have not only last year's model, I have model before that. So what I do is, okay, who wants to buy the two years ago model? Give it to them for dirt cheap. Even if I don't like the person, let him take it off. Empty the warehouse. Oh, last year's model. Okay, give it at a discount. This year's model, who wants to buy? So this year's model is advertised in a big way and they do legal dealings. Last year's model, okay, I'll give it to you at a discount. They don't talk about it. The really old models, they just give it. Okay, take it, take it. Just keep quiet about it. I don't know. I'm not involved in it. Somebody else is involved. This is exactly what is happening. See, US doesn't give a fuck. Simple, simple. Think, just, have you forgotten what US did with Afghanistan? After talking all about freedom and this and that and just how they just ran away from there. They didn't give a fuck to how the people will suffer and die. And how many people suffered and died? How many people? How many people who were loyal to United States? They left on the road. And in fact, the most shameful part is, see the Taliban, now billions, billions of dollars worth of money, which belongs to the Taliban, which belongs to them, it's rightfully theirs. US is saying, uh, no, it will not be given to you. It will be given to charities and what. Who is there to account all this? How do you know it is not going in their pockets? How do you know they are not taking it and spending for the way they like? I mean, and then you're questioning Oh, they are terrorists. Just imagine if somebody took your money, billions of dollars of your money and spend it the way they like. You're going to keep quiet. You're going to say, hey, it's okay. It's okay. We are friends. You are doing this with Taliban. You're doing this with Afghanistan. You're do sorry. You're doing with Afghanistan, Taliban, same thing. You're doing this with, uh, what is that name? Uh, Iran. Okay. You're doing this with Venezuela. You're doing this with all these countries, all these countries. Now you're doing it with Russia. You're doing it with China, China, Huawei and this, oh, sorry, you're a terrorist organization, TikTok can't operate here, Huawei can't operate here, oh, I don't care, you will freeze all your assets. You're doing this in all these countries. You know, at some point, people are going to be like, enough is enough. They'll all team up and they'll bloody want to destroy you. Who suffers? Do you think the politicians suffer? Oh, no, they don't suffer. They have done their bit. They enjoy their retirement. It's the ordinary man. It's the ordinary people. They are the ones who suffer. Simple thing. If you still believe in the American system of values and all that, what happened to the housing bubble crisis? What happened? This is the banking system that took advantage of its own people, of people with their retirement funds. They just didn't give a damn. Look what is happening in Canada with Trudeau. You think he gives a damn about uh, people? You think he gives a damn out? No, it just votes. So stop believing politicians. In fact, in my WhatsApp group, there was, uh, you know, in my WhatsApp group, there are majority Indians. Okay, majority Indians. And can you believe it? Our Indians were fighting with each other. Uh, literally threatening each other. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to come and kill you. And I had to step in. I'm like... What? What happened? And you know why were they fighting? They were fighting because of differences in opinions, in their opinions, of Russia and Ukraine. Imagine the fun. Indians fighting with Indians because of Russia and Ukraine. Does it even make sense to you? There are people fighting about the hijab and they, they never pray to God. They don't follow God's path, nothing. But they are fighting about the hijab. In fact, Hindus who don't even, who, who don't follow a thing about Hindus. I have this guy. He doesn't follow a thing about Hinduism. He drinks, smokes, masturbates, goes to prostitutes, everything. 
but he'll say hindu 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 he'll shout only when modi brings up something so the point i'm trying to tell you here is politics is a dirty fucking game it's a dirty game if you are expecting politicians to be honest if you're expecting a country's politicians to be honest with another guy you're mistaken so the in answer to this uae okay uae has been asking usa please you know the, these guys they are not talking about we attacked them for so many years with saudi they attacked us protect us and they expected us to say yes we are there for you why did they expect this because they signed that abrahamic deal with when trump was there uh, abraham accord they made friendship with israel they said fuck you all you muslims and all you arabs fuck you we will make peace with the the zionists or the israelis okay we'll go against all the muslim culture and all the arabic values fuck all of you we are with us we are the modern we are the next generation and they thought their problems will be solved but what happened a yeah, short term short term israelis came in for what for sex and fucking and and israelis don't give a damn they'll not follow the rules at all okay they came for fucking they came for drugs how many people got and but they were not published but you can check the israeli papers how many in fact do you have you forgotten that nude girls were there in the balcony and you know they took a porno shoot that never happened never happened in the history of ue it was caught live on camera how many of us got the videos ha ah, this happened when after israelis came in right drug fueled parties and uh, girls and who was following social distancing how many videos they got i it's just that i couldn't put it publicly okay so after they signed up with israel israelis don't give a damn okay now they thought oh things are going to improve a lot lot of money is going to come in but israelis have their they control what is happening in usa they control i don't know why or how or what maybe the most powerful rich guys in usa are israelis whatever you crack a joke anything got to do with israel you're anti semitic oh anti islamic is oh you're overreacting if you criticize islam you're overreacting you're anti islamic uh, they say you're overreact but if you crack a joke on israelis or the holocaust or you say anything you're anti semitic oh anti semitic anything of history anything about israel anti semitic you you can't even say a sentence about nazis and uh, the jews being killed oh anti semitic oh see so us believes it's a greatest us is never wrong so now when ue asked us we took care of you we listened to what you had to say we signed that treaty we got israelis here now please please <laughs> but you know what happened trump was there trump bye bye biden came in and when biden came in the old man mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh yeah 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 what what It's a different party it's democratic party democratic hmm crack crack So they said I'm sorry you signed with Donald Trump you didn't signed with Joe Biden you didn't sign with Obama We don't know you fuck you So now UAE after betraying its arabic culture its arabic heritage its islamic foundations everything that it stood for even its relationship with saudi even qatar everything and it made peace with us and israel now us said fuck you i don't give a fuck about you and ignoring just imagine let's say for example you and me we make a deal and i tell you bre you know resign from your company resign from your company tell your boss fuck you I'll give you a job. I'll give you a job in my company and you take my word on it. You say okay bye bye. Fuck off man. Fuck you. Uh, resign. I am going to resign. And the guy says okay fine. 20 years relation you want to say yeah fuck you. I'm going to resign. Okay. Resigned. And then he say hey loy listen I I resigned from the company. So when can I join? Oh yeah wait wait wait. Um get in touch with me after one week. So you're like ah oh, okay fine you wait. after one week you call me hello i uh, listen uh, i resigned as you said now not getting a salary i waited for a week yeah listen listen i'm a little busy man i'm just busy i have another thing to do uh, give me a call after two weeks or three weeks and you're like uh, okay so you waited one week you waited another three weeks now one month is gone 
Hey, Loy, listen, uh, man, uh, it has been one month since I resigned from that job. You told me to say fuck you to the boss. I said, I'm not earning any money, man. And then I turn around and tell you, man, stop chewing my brains. I have 110 things to worry about. Your bloody job, who the hell cares? You figure out something, go work freelance. What the hell? Just because I've made friends with you, what? I have to dance to you? Okay, you understood? Just imagine how you would feel. This is the same way he feels. Which comes to the next point, okay, which comes to the next point. So when UAE realized USA just fucked us over and now USA is playing funny games by saying, oh, UAE is a place where all this money laundering, all that. Okay, this F-35 fighter jets, you remember that F-35? We told you we'll buy, you know, for billions of dollars. Fuck you, fuck you. Suddenly USA, what? How dare you do that? This is this is not ethical. How dare you do that? We we with our strategic partners, we we represent values of uh, Christian democracy and blah blah blah. You were like quack 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 quack. Bye 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 bye. And then France, see see how politics. France thought, hmm, you gave me a bamboo by getting involved in Australia, and um, you made me lose a submarine contract. Now I will show you, UK and this one, I'll show you. So France suddenly jumped and said, UAE, I love you. I will give you good discount, good discount with, with uh, French wine and French cheese. Oh, you would love it very much. UAE said, hmm, <laughs> I'll show this guy. Yeah, France, you know, it's like having a girlfriend and you're trying to make the other one jealous. So UAE accepted France and US now bamboozled. Okay. So this was, you see how the game is played? Okay, then, now UAE abstained from imposing sanctions on Russia. The next question, why? Simple, just Google search, Google search, okay? How many Russians are there in UAE? Around 100,000. How many Ukrainians are there in UAE? 5,000. Which do you think benefits UAE most? 5,000 Ukrainians or 100,000 Russians, number one. Number two, how many mafia, illegal, you know, money laundering people from Russia are coming in? In fact, when you go and get, just Google search via VPN, Dubai escorts, call girls and prostitutes, 100 only, 100, one shot, 500, small shot, long shot, uh, 1,000. How many Russian prostitutes are there? Man, let's let's stop acting like, oh, Loy, what are you talking? Dubai Islamic country, there's no prost... Baba, just go there in the night after 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. You'll see a line of nice prostitutes. You'll see a line of nice, our uh, African ladies, nice, nice good putangs, you know. But be careful, huh? there's Russian and... And especially our Indians, when you go, no, don't ask discount, they will whack you. <laughs> so, see how many Russian prostitutes are there? Okay, from where these Russian prostitutes are come? You think the Dubai government doesn't know prostitutes are there? You seriously think uh, the, the, the country with the most advanced technological software and hardware to spy and know, does not know that you are a prostitute or you're a pimp or you're doing all this? No, they know, Baba, they know, they have the technology, they have the skill. It's just that you close your eyes. I didn't see. Don't make noise. Do it quietly. That's why when I used to take my girlfriends, various girlfriends to go to hotels, you think they were my wives? No, they were my girlfriend. The hotel staff, if you want to take a girl for a boom boom, just Google search Agoda or uh, these other websites which offer uh, rates for hotels. Clearly, it'll be stated in the hotel. You can bring someone without proving relationship. I don't know what is the exact term, it has been so long ago. Some hotels, two star, one star, three star, they'll say, no, if you are staying with another person, proof of relationship, especially if it's a member of the opposite sex. But in four star, five star hotels, they don't give a damn. You can bring 10 women and you one girl, you can have a two some, three some, five some, six some, you can even bring a boyfriend and girlfriend, nobody gives a damn. Because you have the money, they'll keep quiet. So in terms of Russians, the number of Russians in UAE are much more. The number of financial investors in UAE, Russians, are much more. Ukrainians are, are a very small percentage. Now that, see listen, that doesn't mean I'm saying Ukrainians are less human. No, there are, 
I'm not bringing the human element. I'm bringing strictly politics. Okay. So unfortunately, the game of politics is such whereby UAE sees a lot more benefit with Russia and Russians, less benefit with Ukraine. That is why. Why do you think they give a rat's ass to anyone from Africa? They don't give a damn to Bangladesh. They don't give a damn to Sri Lanka. Poor countries, even Pakistan, they don't give a damn. India. Why you think our Indians are so high quality? No, India's population is 1 billion. That is why people were surprised to know that Indians are there in Ukraine. Baba, Indians are there even on the moon. You go to a new planet with aliens, there also you'll get Indians because there are so many Indians. Indians are like, you know, I'm an Indian uh, passport holder. I can tell you, they say like Indians are like cockroaches. They just multiply everywhere. Every single place you'll get an Indian. I went to Dublin, there also I saw an Indian. You will get an Indian every single place, whether you like it or you don't like it. And in fact, you, you go to a, a gay bar in a, a Scandinavian country which has no uh, contact with the outside world. There also you will find an Indian. I can challenge you on that. Okay. So, our Indians are everywhere. And the only reason why UAE is moving towards hugging Modi, you think uh, uh, the Arab guy is in love with a Hindu guy, a guy like Modi who shouts about Hinduism and speaks against uh, Islam and Muslims. His party openly speaks against Muslim, Muslims and uh, don't wear a hijab, don't wear this, don't wear that. You think they don't know? Yeah, politics is where you close your eyes. No, I can't see all this. I can only see money and investments. And you think Modi is in love with the UAE? You think Modi is in love with the Arabs? No, why is he hugging? This hugging is only for benefits. Okay. So, the only reason why UAE chose to take the side of uh, neutral, neutral is one is doesn't want controversy, so we abstain from the vote. China, it's obvious because they want to teach US a lesson and it's better to be friends with Russia than to be friends with the US who are perfect, the politicians are perfect backstabbers. Now, you'll notice that UAE welcomed the president of Turkey in a very grand way. Oh, well, it's very simple. S it all comes down to money. See, they didn't like Turkey very much and they said uh, Erdogan or whatever, he's a bad guy, whatever. Man, if you, let's say for example, tomorrow Erdogan says, okay, shakes, listen, I have one billion, one billion unaccounted money, I'll give it to you. You think they're going to say, no, this is principle, no, Allah will say no, oh, we are people of value, they'll say, fuck all this, come here, you want to, you want me to do something, you want to take me from behind, come, I'll give you my rear end also, come on, man. Money does the talking, my dear friend. It's a game of chess. So before they didn't like Turkey very much. Now why they like Turkey is because they realized, okay, we made a mistake with Israel and we made a mistake with USA. Okay, we thought they are our friends. In fact, the F-35s that US wanted to sell to UAE, Israel objected. Why Israel objected? See the fun. Israel objected because they don't want to make sure any Arab state is powerful, even if they are your friends, because they are like, Today you're my friend, tomorrow you can be my enemy. Why should I ensure that you get powerful weapons? So they control the US narrative and they said, they hold US by the balls. I do not know how. Okay. In fact, this, uh, that spyware, which is there, that software, the whole world knows it has come from Israel. Had it come from China, which Huawei is the thing, they destroyed China, they put sanctions on China. Look what they did with China. But with Israel, have they done anything? Absolutely nothing. Oh, we know it's a spyware. What to do? Pegasus software. Oh, what to do? What to do? It's a very bad thing. Don't do it. Israel, don't do it. Don't do it. They never did anything. Okay. So now, see, now there are two choices. UAE has to choose. Do we choose US, Israel, Cyprus, Greece, EU? Do we choose them? Or do we choose Russia, Turkey, China, Iran? Now, UAE is a business hub. It made friends with USA, Israel, all that, thinking that this will open doors of business opportunities and investments. Why do you think they purchased uh, to remove the, the red ban for that COVID uh, nonsense? Why, why do you think they just lifted all the sanctions? U UK said, oh, UAE is ban in our list or red uh, list or whatever. After investing 1 billion, Boris Johnson, oh, his hair is always like this. He said, oh, it's okay. Uh, UAE is fine. Totally fine. They don't give a damn. But UAE needs money. 
it realized making friends with these guys these guys are simply we just opened our doors to them and they are talking money laundering and there are these political parties if you don't support the left the right gets to you if you don't support the republicans democrats get to you so they realized what a headache it is better to take friends with russia china and all that they'll at least invest even if black money even if unaccounted money no headaches so that's why now they are keeping the doors open they are saying you want to play the game of chess we'll play it properly so now they they are showing us you either do things our way or without saying without make it public we will show their support to them now what us can do sanctions then they know that they will lose their friends even more in fact today none of the asia summits none of the meetings even nato they don't give a damn about usa because they realize us can't be trusted france has realized this in a painful way okay in fact in fact here's the big thing un what did donald trump say about un un is nothing it's absolutely useless they're simply paying money with no benefit now what is happening now you have russia attacking ukraine what is the un doing oh please raise your hands okay we'll have a vote okay we'll have another meeting oh this is uh, inhuman oh this is not good un is only quack 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 oh let's have a meeting okay let's have another meeting let's have an this meeting 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 raise your hands place a vote and this and that oh we'll play sanctions or oh, we'll do this it's all waste of time i don't know why un exists seriously i have no idea why un exists what tell me what are they doing what is un doing even during the covid crisis what did they do they just gave information they just had meetings they just had like a panchayat even now what is un doing to russia nothing in fact you can have a proposal against uh, russia russia will just veto it finish they have the power to veto you make anything against us us will veto it it's a waste of time this this meetings and all that is nonsense okay so now the questions finally at the end he says what are your thoughts on the new change in foreign policy they have realized their relationship with usa is a mistake they have realized their relationship with israel is a mistake so they have realized better to do what baba zaid the founding father had done just focus on agriculture focus on your people stay neutral don't get involved in war have unity between the arab states that was the timeless wisdom of baba zaid the founding father sheikh mohammed and the other zaid they came and they wanted oh we have the biggest erection burj khalifa we have the biggest uh, mall we have the biggest this biggest those are all short term investments that is just to show off how big your sausage is it's just glamour it's glitz it's empty it is not sustainable check what has happened to the bloody world you put sand you dump billions of dollars in the water what happened what happened to the palm island 1 2 3 i've said before maktoum airport they spent a fortune they spent billions of dollars to create this airport electricity water staff all that in maktoum airport it's in middle of nowhere what happened to logistic city what happened to dubai district 1 what happened to uh, that uh, business bay all flop utter flop nobody is talking about it you can't talk about it because you will be in trouble so if they had instead focused on agriculture if they had focused on making people work hard if they had focused on instead of just doubling the salaries of all emiratis for no reason they said we will open up a global competition you compete with everyone globally and we'll see where you stand if they had made life tough they would have been tough people uae the the emirati people they were de- they were born in the desert in the heat sheikh mohammed was made to sleep in the sand he was his grandfather used to put scorpions under his bed so when he would get stung it would pain but he would develop immunity this is actual from his autobiography from his sorry his biography you read it these were the values they were taught to live on dates they were ta- thought to live in the heat of the desert they were taught to live living a simple life but today's generation is just utterly uh, land cruiser take 10 loans uh, oh i want a 10000 dollar salary after i graduate from college with no experience just a stamp i need uh, uh, 5000 dollars we need to spoil a generation like this with social media with all this nonsense in fact uh, there are these uh, youtubers w- one guy i don't even want to take his name he keeps showing his sister with his big boobs and putting uh, what water and all that and showing it is come down to this it is come down to this nonsense in fact one of the very popular youtubers want to give him he's busy targeting indian audiences he's showing in punjab he's showing in this 
<laughs> instead of focusing on your culture you're busy promoting someone else's guy and the best part nas uh, this guy i will talk about nas biggest scam artist he'll sell his own soul if required well, what has he done he being a palestinian he's supporting israelis and now he's in the uae and he tried to con that lady from uh, what uh, philippines you remember that big controversy yeah oh we'll have the creative studio listen all these guys are out there to make money nobody gives a damn about values and all that this is the same problem that happened with uae's leadership where baba zaid used to focus on something that was so profound something that agriculture on uh, focus on citizens focus on making peace focus on keeping the identity the culture the values this was timeless it's like focusing on having a goose that lays one egg at a time instead they said no we want billions of eggs we want all the eggs cut over, cut it open we don't give a fuck you know what is the problem right now there is no grooming for future leaders sheikh mohammed son is a model good at poetry good at adventure sports good at climbing the top of the ferris wheel and uh, on top of uh, burj khalifa and standing with cristiano ronaldo he's good at all that he's good at social media he's good cute face he's good at uh, taking photograph with a camel and a tiger and a lion and i don't see any leadership work tell me which global leader on the in the world is busy taking photographs on top of the building on with a nice little cute little cat and a, a lion and a camel and a, a doing races what, what is how is this helping the country this is the, the <laughs> this is the sh- sad part and sheikh uh, what is a sheikh mohammed he's become old that even that Dubai Museum for the Future great building it looks glass and plastic and all uh, lights and all, but that is not the arab culture that is just a jazzy tourist destination where are the fundamentals what are you focusing on you're you're busy trying to make dubai a las vegas for prostitution drugs alcohol in fact now they are even issuing gambling licenses oh we will have it here we'll do it in a islamic way very halal way we'll do the uh, what uh, the gambling in a very halal way yeah what you you'll recite the holy quran before you play cards what stupidity in if you if you bring prostitute what prost haram haram ya fi no prostitute no no prostitute what what, uh, what about alcohol no alcohol no 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 there is no alcohol allah oh allah khali no alcohol oh go to rasul gema see in the night club you'll see an arab guy with kandura he'll sit with two girls there i have taken photograph only thing i can't share this see let's let's call a spade a spade okay the bottom line is this today politics countries leaders they are all looking at their own benefit that's it there are no friends there are no friends and the last one why the hell is my dog barking there someone come okay see the final thing okay final thing how will this affect you Oh man I just hate it when I'm making a video in a dog box I think there's someone come don't mind okay anyway let's let's continue see how will this affect UAE the the thing is very simple UAE has to focus on making money has to focus on the future has to focus on bringing down its um, what do you say the expenses the problem is now the expenses are going up and up because it's become expensive uh salaries have increased inflation is rising high they have opened their doors to a international community where 10% are only emiratis 90% are expatriates so now it's too late now it's too late to go back go back to the foundation values you think they can all of a sudden say okay no israelis okay uh, we will have strict uh, islamic protocols we will have uh, sharia law in place or we'll have um, you know we'll keep it islamic or uh, we'll keep it simple or we'll bring down your sa- salaries no you can't do this it's too late you have destroyed and decimated the foundation that was there so now what can you do now what is the solution the only solution is what they are doing right now be neutral keep usa and russia guessing keep china and uh, who's the opposing guy whatever taiwan okay keep uh, russia and uh, uh, you know 
uh, the other uh, Ukraine. Okay, keep uh, parties Iraq and Iran and keep everyone two different uh, India and Pakistan. In fact, Pakistan our Imran Khan went to meet uh, Putin for what? He just went to take a photograph. He he doesn't have money to even wash his bum. Okay. What do you think? He went to tell Putin, Putin, stop this war and Putin will say, yes, 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 Imran Khan, yes. He just went to shake hands because the election is coming up. Just take a photo, please, please, a photo. I have to look like I'm doing something worthwhile. See why India didn't get involved? India knows this game. Everyone is a loser. So India doesn't want to get involved in it at all. You guys fight. You busy fight with each other, bombard each other. We will be happy. That is a smart way. Just be diplomatic. Be neutral. Just focus on your benefit and end of story. That's the only way. This is what I wanted to share with you. You tell me. You tell me if I'm right or wrong. I would love to hear from you. And yes, I put the links down below. Check all those people. And you tell me if I'm wrong that US is nobody's friend. The only people they are friends with are themselves, their pocket and their benefits. This is what I have to say. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is me signing off. You guys take care.